Um, who knows how the Huja Group works and what we actually do as a company? Send out a lot of emails. Yeah. People love emails, though. Yeah, my inbox would be empty without them. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And as I was saying earlier, I have to read all of them. So the ones that go directly to AJ and the ones that he sends out and a lot of the responses that come back in, I have to look at all of them. So, yeah. So. Go out twice. Yeah. yeah, one in HTML and one in standard format. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. But hey, I'd rather get it twice than not at all, is the moral. <laughs> it's not my best one. <laughs> anyway, the Ahuja Group, how do we work? Um, obviously, AJ quite a while ago started investing in property, as you may or may not have noticed. He has a couple of properties now. He's doing all right for himself. Um, I think he's got three houses and a caravan park or something like that. Maybe a little bit more than that. Um, AJ's philosophy for me works very well because, as I said at the beginning of this, nothing's emotional about it. So you look at any area. If he sees a bargain, he'll still put an offer in on it. He'll still put a very cheeky offer in it. And uh, a lot of the time it works. And one of the, the ways that a, the way, sorry, the way that it works best for AJ is the fact that he doesn't care where the property is. As long as the finances stack up on it and he can make money on it, he'll look anywhere. So uh, there are investment companies out there, and we had a conversation about one earlier on, that will look in certain geographic areas and those areas only. Is that a wise way of doing it? Some say yes, some say no. Um, my concern with the old adage of all your eggs in one basket is if you buy properties in the same area, if suddenly there's a high level of unemployment, suddenly your world comes crashing around around you, crashing, crashing down around you. Time I'm getting tired now. Um, so basically spread your portfolio, which is what, exactly what AJ's done and any good investor should do. Um, if you want to inv invest in London, great, you go for it. Best of luck with that one. I'll see you some other time. If you're looking realistically to invest and you're happy enough to do it as a non-geographic investment, then there are some very good places to invest right now. Um, one of the best performance-wise, everyone grabs their pen, Northeast. Um, if you look at the Northeast, there's some great properties up there, very cheap, very good build, very high rental demand. Um, chances of people in, in some of these areas getting onto the property ladder, very low which means you have long-term tenants. So I'm talking, not forget your city centres. People say to me, can you get properties in Sheffield? Yes, you can. Are they cheap? No, they're not. You know, let's face it, there's a Harvey Nichols in Sheffield. Are there going to be cheap houses in Sheffield? No. So if you come outside of those areas, Rotherham's not too bad, um, but go further north, head up towards Yorkshire areas, simple outside of, of um, Leeds, again, Leeds city centre, non-starter. Lots of new build apartments, um, all very expensive properties. Are they selling? No. I've seen some of them 40%, 50% discount on new builds, still not being touched. Are they being rented out? No. So come outside city centre areas. But go further north, up towards your Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough, Sunderland, County Durham, places like that. There are high volumes of very cheap properties. Still get them for 50 and 60,000 pound up there. That will rent out all day long at a good 450 to 500 pound a month to private and DSS tenants. DSS do pay slightly more. Um, on an average, if you're looking at, f f say, 400 for private, you're probably looking at 450 for a DSS. Once you start getting up to the 600 pound mark rental, that's when it flips. Suddenly you get a higher return from private compared to DSS. Um, so what we basically look for is cheap houses. Is it a bargain because it's cheap? No, no exactly. Cheap houses are all over the UK. I could go on the web now, connect, look for some websites, and I'll find you as many cheap houses as you want. Are they good investments? No. They could be cheap for a reason. Block of flats might be full of druggies. Is it cheap because it's a good investment, or is it cheap because it's a hellhole and nobody wants to buy it? The latter. So you need to understand what a good value property is. You need to, as I said, Two words of the day, due diligence. Understand the areas you're buying in. It's so easy to do. Anyone who doesn't understand where they're buying nowadays, to be fair, is lazy because there's enough information out there on the web for you to find out everything you need. County council websites, as I said, things like Up My Street, they'll give you the crime figures, employment figures, everything you need to know. Um, people say to me, do you ever go and visit properties? Very rarely. If you're buying a portfolio, buying to buy, you know, can buy lots of properties, the time, effort, and money involved in actually driving around and looking at these properties is not worth it. You can drive around, look at a house. Does that tell you any more, really, than you would have found out from looking on the web? Chances are no. You turn up on a nice day, nice and sunny, the house looks great. Does that tell you what the crime rate is like in that area? 
No, it doesn't. Does it tell you what employment's like? Is there a little note on their front door saying, 5% of crimes in this area are solved within 24 hours? Nothing like that. So you need to understand where you're buying, getting in your car for a day and looking at it pays nothing really, but getting on the web for a couple of hours will tell you everything you need to know within theory. Yes? Right, just a word of caution. Yes. I've seen some friends buying small portfolios, mm -hmm. and out of five or six, one of them was burnt down. Right. Completely. So it's worth knocking on the door and finding out that they've got tenants. Exactly. I mean, put the moral of the story is on that one. If anyone offers you a portfolio, why are they selling it? If somebody's selling a portfolio, as I said, who did I speak to earlier on about stuff in Manchester? We were offered a portfolio when it was in Manchester, outside, more Lancashire than Manchester itself. And a high percentage of those properties were what they call CPOs, compulsory purchase orders against them, which meant they were being sold very cheap because they were going to be knocked down and the site developed. So sometimes you have to ask yourself a question. Yeah, but, I mean, man, he's allowed to sell it to you. Sorry? And is he allowed to sell it legally? Is that not a crime? No, no it is a crime. Basically, there was non disclosure. The estate agent forgot or didn't think to ask the question. Thankfully, we did, and we spoke to the county council, and they said, right, there seems a lot of properties, let's have a quick look. And there were CPOs against, I'd say, 50, 60, maybe 70% of them. So they're all targeted to be knocked down. Did anyone watch that um, Secret Millionaire? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, do you see the guy who went up to Manchester, and he was looking, he helped the families out, and they, were, they had CPOs against those houses here. Anyone remembers that episode? That's what that is. Basically, they're being bought by a developer to knock them all down and regenerate the site. Great if you, you know, if... Your, if your solicitor would have picked that up. If there's a CPO, the council would have written something on it. Right, Your solicitor would mm -hmm. be able to pick that up. The problem you have then is chances are you paid a survey fee, maybe a broker fee, and you may pay and legal fees as well to find out something that a simple phone call could have found out for you just ringing the council just to check. So I'm always cautious, you know, cautious if somebody says I'm selling on a portfolio, mm -hmm. ask why. Mm -hmm. you know, so there's normally a reason behind it. Either they're broke, um, in that case, they're broke for a reason. Maybe they're not paying the amount of money that they say they are on these rentals, so just be, be cautious. Um, but what we tend to do with any properties that come into a hooja, we do the due, due diligence on them. I've said it so often, I forget the word is now. Um, so we'll look at the properties, we'll look at the areas, we'll do some research. What are, the, you know, what are these areas like? Are there any potential growths in these particular areas? Are there any big investors, any big companies going there? Are the prices going to go up? Are the rental figures accurate? We'll check on the local housing authority website and look at the rental potential from a particular property. We'll do comparables. Um, we'll also look at the estate agents and see how effective the estate agents are. Sometimes estate agents are so lazy, it's unbelievable. So if you've got an, you, know, you might have the best property deal in the world, but if the estate agent you're dealing with is a pain in the backside and very slow at doing it, with the way that rates are changing at the moment and mortgage products are being dropped, by the time this estate agent gets off his backside and does something, you might find that the product that suited you today is gone tomorrow. So things like that can make a difference. We've had clients who've lost deals because the estate agent's gone on holiday for two weeks and not left any of the deals with his colleagues. In the meantime, mortgage products being dropped, so the person can't buy it at the, um, at the rate they were going to get it originally. So things like that. We'll look at um, letting agents in the local area, what they're like, how effective are they, what are the rental demands really like. Are they accurate in what they're letting agents tell us? Um, hands up here who can afford to spend all day sat at their PC doing research. That's the big difference. You've either got investors who can do this full time, you know, got the money, got the time, got the resource to actually sit there and do all this, or there's people who work nine till five, they might have some spare time on the weekend to do it, but then are the estate agents open after midday? On a Saturday, chances are, no, they're not. So what you need is somebody who can actually do that work for you. And that's, in essence, what a huger does.